I've had the LG G Watch on my wrist ever since I got it at Google I.O. And this week, Android Wear was officially released. And if you want proof about just how much I've been using the G Watch, well, check out this really cool watch tan. My full review of the LG G Watch is on its way, probably to come quite soon after this particular video, which I'm doing to show you some extra ways of tweaking Android Wear to really fit your lifestyle and to really get some of your tasks done. Uh, the core functionality is what the focus will be of my LG G Watch review and also the Samsung Gear Live review. So in this video, you can see some more creative ways of how to use Android Wear. So it's Josh Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And these are some extra ways of how to use Android Wear. So before I get started, you probably know about a number of different applications that are available for Android Wear. If you have one and you go into the application and browse compatible apps, you'll see a slew of applications, everything from Lyft that will allow you to call cabs uh, using the watch to all the cooks so that you can take a look at recipes uh, step by step in order for you to create nice dishes. There are also quite a few applications that are not listed in that particular area. And uh, unfortunately for some of us who really are into Android Wear, we either have to wait for our applications to magically appear on the watch and then we realize that they support Android Wear. Or you can do what I do, which uh, is pretty much troll the internet for all the information about upcoming applications. There are two particular places that I go to that some of you may be interested in. Uh, all of you Redditors out there, the Android Wear subreddit is uh, doing really well and people are putting up news every day about things that are coming out. Now, Wear Store basically consolidates all of the applications that either support Android Wear or are made specifically for them. Yes, there are applications that you can install on your phone that just are standalone apps that are put onto your uh, watch. And that is kind of what I'm focusing on here in this video. So those are a couple of ways for you to take a look at all the latest that is coming out for Android Wear. And uh, whether you have the LG G Watch or the Samsung Gear Live, you should be able to use all of those and keep up with what you can do on your wearable. So if you were to go to the dictation area, but also tap on there to be able to take a look at the menu, you can go all the way down to start and it will show all of the applications you have installed on the watch itself. And in this case, I have one called Bunting. And now essentially what Bunting is, uh, it's a application that allows you to dictate tweets. It's a very easy way of tweeting out to your account. Uh, basically the application is really simple. All you have to do is just log into Bunting to your Twitter account, and from there, you're good to go. Anything you dictate to this application is going to go straight to your Twitter account. Last night, I put out a tweet that just said optimize, and right now I'm gonna go ahead and put out a tweet just to show you how easy it is to use. The next moment is only a moment away. It takes a little while for it to get through, but once it's done, you should be able to go to my Twitter and you'll see that particular uh, quote on my Twitter feed. And that's bunting. So uh, just to show you really quick, another way of getting to it is through the dictation. You just say start in any of the applications that are installed on your Android where to start them. Start bunting. And there you go. Easy way to get to your Twitter to be able to share out to the world. And now the next one I'll show you is called Wearable Widgets. Now this one was just released. It just got its Android Wear support. It's a application that allows you to display, as it probably says in the name already, widgets on any of your smartphones or wearable technology. And in this case, Android Wear is the newest in its additions. Wearable Widgets does have one functionality that I think is really great though, is the fact that it keeps a persistent notification on your phone so that it will always show up here on the watch. Now the reason why that's really great is because one of the limitations of Android Wear is the fact that when you open up an application, like let's say bunting like I just showed you when you're done with it it goes away that means you have to go back to this menu or dictate the application opening itself in order for you to get back to it Android uh, or rather wearable wearable widgets on the other hand allows you to have it open and then from there be able to swipe away and the notification will still be there so you can always just click on it and you'll go straight back to the widgets. So I try to keep things a little bit simple. It was one of those functions that I really needed was volume control and this was the way for me to be able to get it. So that's wearable widgets. Now, if you were wondering if watch faces can be created and downloaded on there, of course they can be. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you one right now and it's called the binary watch face. This is one that a developer did put together and it looks really great. Uh, very clean looking binary clock, as you can see right here. Uh, it will be at the end of the list and you'll have to go over all the way in order to finally get to it. And there it is, the binary watch face. 
And there you go. There's one thing that I did notice about all of these custom watch faces though, it's that the actual cards that might come up in the uh, in the prone position here, where the uh, where you're on the watch face, they can somewhat cover the design. So if you're good about your notifications and you do swipe them all away, then you will get a clean looking watch there. But as you can see already here, it's covering up the bottom row of those binary uh, binary dots. So it's uh, a little bit unseemly in that sense, but it's not that big of a deal. Something that you just will have to take into consideration. Talkwall at its core is able to allow you to change certain settings on the phone. And yes, volume is one of them, but I want to show you wearable widgets as that example. Talkwall, the main function that it is able to do that at least to me is the most useful is it's able to initiate tasker tasks. Now, if we head over to my tasker real quick, Basically all of these steps will allow the phone not only to simulate the taps that are needed in order to uh, initiate my playlist, but also wake up the phone and then put it back into a lock screen at the end. That's what the secure settings areas are for. Now I will tell you that in this particular example, my phone is rooted and that's the reason why I can run shells like the input taps that are there. You it, uh, Root is required for you to be able to do that. But essentially uh, what this will allow me to do is be able to initiate a playlist without me ever having to touch the phone because I can initiate it from Toggle and easily head down to Toggle, which comes up as a card because it is a persistent notification as well. Uh, swipe over to the right, and there it is my first action that I'll be able to just tap, and here we go. So there you go. You saw how quickly that happened. I was able to get the music to play on my phone. It just woke up on its own. I simulated some taps on there using X, Y coordinates of the screen. And there you go, the music started playing. Uh, Tasker is one of the most powerful applications for Android and I just got started using it because of Toggle. And I, re and I, after some tweaking, I finally figured out how to get the playlist to initiate the way that I wanted it to via the watch itself. And that's by just pressing a button in the Toggle area right there. So that's one of the other applications that really shows that with a little bit of time, you should be able to get a lot done on Android Wear. And with Tasker, the capabilities somewhat can be endless. Open Flopsy Droid. Start game, here we go. Does this look familiar? Well, this is, an, this is a game rather that was set up by a developer, basically just looking to recreate the game based on all of our favorite little bird. And this is just, this is all running on my watch right now. And if I really wanted to just waste some time, I could just say open Flopsy Droid or open it from my apps area, the start area. And here we go. We have a whole game right here that is just played via taps. Uh, there are a lot of apps in the Play Store that are available that are not on that list that you'll find in the official area that uh, the Android Wear application brings you to. And these are just a few examples of what are available from watch faces to these particular applications. Android Authority will have its own coverage of Android Wear as applications come out. Uh, but like I told you, there is an app in the Play Store called Wear Store that you can use in order to find the latest applications as they come out, as it is getting updated on a regular basis. Uh, so yeah, this is just a look at Android Wear, some of the extra ways that can be used. And I think Tasker, Toggle is one of my favorite ones. And of course, there are things like Flopsy Droid, which are pretty interesting. Uh, so keep it tuned to Android Authority for my full review of the LG G Watch, talking about the core functionality in that particular sense and also the Samsung Gear Live, which I just received today. So an unboxing and an initial setup and impressions will be available for you. Keep it tuned here for all of that and even more. And don't forget about the content from my colleagues in Android, you know who they are. And uh, after that, keep it tuned here and head on over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.